Okay, hello everybody and welcome to Viva Mondo's webinar, uh, probably the third one we've done in a while. <laughs> um, I just wanted to introduce myself, it's Stavruna again um, with Viva Mondo. I just want to give you a little rundown on vivamundo.com and what we do, how we support students in finding the next chapter of your life. Um, we are joined here today by Fairleigh Dickinson University, um, a short train ride away from New York City, uh, which is very inviting if you ask me. Um, so Viva Mondo, what we essentially do is to help students um, with the information and details required for studying abroad, uh, destinations, degrees, application details, visa information, uh, lifestyle tips as well, just general um, passport to finding what your next destination will be in life. Um, I just want to orient you guys on Zoom and how to actually use the app. Um, so basically, we would love for you guys to ask questions. Honestly, ask them at any time you would like. Uh, please, if you could, use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we prefer that much to the chat just because it's much easier to see where all the questions are in one one place. Um, but of course, feel free to ask them at any time. Um, we're also streaming this on Facebook Live at the moment uh, on our page, Salau du Estudente. Please do go over and have a look. Um, if you want to register on there, the link is all on the post for you to go and register. Okay, um, I want to introduce to you Christy Innes from the institution at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Uh, the floor is all yours, Christy. Terrific. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Fairleigh Dickinson University. Uh, we're here today to um, join us for the webinar on Advance Your Career in Public Service through our Master of Arts in Public Administration. So I'm just thrilled that you're here with us, but let me tell you first a little bit about myself. I'm Christy Innes. I am the assistant to the director at the School of Public and Global Affairs. Our director's name is Dr. Peter Woolley. He founded the program. And um, I'm also the liaison to the United Nations. So I'll tell you a little bit about that later, but we have a Master of Arts in Global Affairs that's linked um, with the United Nations. And uh, that can bring some very interesting things for you as students as well. Um, what I'm responsible for is recruitment, but also I'm here to guide you through the admissions process and getting registered for your courses and just throughout your program, I'll be there as your advisor. So um, I want you to feel free to reach out to me whenever you like with any questions that you have. So we have, I think, students from at least 10 countries with us today. Um, these are the ones I know, Aruba, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, Poland, the UAE, United Kingdom and Yemen. I've been to all but I think two of those countries. I've traveled a lot. I've been around the world to I think 39 countries in my life. So I love to travel. I've loved every place I've gone. And if I haven't gotten to you, I, I hope I will in the near future. If there's any other countries represented here today, just type into, I guess not the chat box, but the Q&A. Um, just, just make a note that you're, you're here with us. I'd like to know. Um, so let me tell you first a few facts about our university. Uh, we were established in 1942. We're in New Jersey, in the United States, of course. And we have um, over 12,000 students between four campuses that we have. That makes us the largest private university in New Jersey. We have four campus locations, um, two in New Jersey, one in England, and one in Canada. Um, one thing that's important for you as international students to um, pay attention to when you're looking at universities is if we're accredited. So that really makes sure that we uphold very strict standards on our curriculum and how we work with our students. Um, so we're accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. We are a very career oriented university um, that means that we actually offer, and in some programs like ours require that you do an internship so that you have practical experience when you graduate. And even as international students, you're allowed to do those internships. So we are really a, a, a global university. We're very internationally focused. We were actually the first university in the United States to have an international campus, and that was in Roxton, England. And we still, of course, have that campus. Um, 
So we have 87 countries, students from 87 countries represented at our university. We're very diverse. We also have students from 35 states around the United States. And our location is fantastic. It's, it's a suburban location, but just outside of New York City. So there is a bus that will take you right into New York City from campus. It's only 10 miles away. Um, and then our other campus is about an hour away, a um, little different type of campus. So let me give you a quick rundown. We have Metropolitan Campus. The TNET campus is the one that's closest to New York. Florham campus is a beautiful campus. It's about an hour away and that's on the old estate of the Vanderbilts. If you're familiar with the Vanderbilt family um, in the United States, or they played a lot into our history and they had a beautiful mansion and beautiful rolling hills that we have the campus now. So you have classes in this mansion. It's just lovely. Actually, the picture here is that mansion um, at the Florham campus. And then we also have a campus in Vancouver. We, off, we offer courses also off campus at many different locations. We try to make it accessible to professionals so that they don't have to travel far after work at the end of the day. But that's really good for you because we're attracting people who are working professionals and they do come to campus as well to classes. So you get to interact with people who are working in your profession. Okay, so these are some pictures. The Hackensack River um, runs through our metropolitan campus. It's very pretty. It's the larger of our campuses. We have 8,600 students there. And then the Florham campus is um, the one that's on the Vanderbilt estate that has 3,600 students. Um, those are the two campuses as international students that you're required to be on campus to do your studies. So you would, be in, you would choose one of those two campuses to study. Um, we, again, have a very strong global perspective. We have 100 majors and concentrations in um, undergraduate, graduate, and PhD. Um, and we have pretty small classes, about a ratio of 14 to students to one teacher. Very often the classes are smaller than that. So it really gives you a chance to interact with the professors and with your classmates. Uh, an important question I think most students um, ask about our rankings. I think that's very important when you're traveling all the way to the United States to attend the college. Um, the U.S. News and World Report is, gives one of the rankings that we pay the most attention to here in the United States. And FDU is ranked among the best national universities in the North region. But one of the, the more recent rankings that is really important for students these days is um, about the value because U.S. education is very expensive. And you need to know that you're really getting your money's worth. Basically, you're getting a good value in your education. And we were just ranked number 20 in best value schools in U.S. News and World Report. We have a number of other rankings. You can look online and see things about our individual programs. Um, Again, if your Forbes has ranked us one of America's best colleges, Wall Street Journal. So we're um, a, a really top university for you to come to in the United States and in New Jersey here in New York. Um, another thing you'll be concerned about as an international student is what's it going to be like for you living on campus? Because you are a long way from home. You want to know that you're being able to access all the services that you need, both for your studies and for your normal life. So. Both campuses have everything included on campus that you need. And we have the computer labs and residence halls. Um, we have great um, fitness center and sports centers, uh, restaurants, banking. So everything is within you know, walking distance. We have you know, bookstores and libraries for you to do your studies, of course, multi-faith chapel. Um, one of the things that makes our campuses so exciting and, and kind of different because our one campus in in uh, TNEC, the Metropolitan Campus, is what we call Division I Athletics Campus. And um, there you can see that our bowling team actually had uh, the championships twice, won the championships. Um, we played baseball there. And then the Florham Campus, the women's basketball is huge. Um, they've been champions in, in 2014, and those games are so exciting. It brings a lot of excitement to the campus. You can see the, the gymnasium's packed every time there's a game. So it really is a lot of fun to have all these sporting events happening on campus. Another thing you should know about Fairleigh Dickinson University is that we have a very long history, 70 years of shared history with the United Nations. 
And that started years ago. We opened our campus you know, internationally, and then we became an NGO, which is a non-governmental organization, a nonprofit that's recognized by the United Nations. So we actually have a consultative status with the United Nations, with ECOSOC. ECOSOC is their economic and social council at the United Nations. We're also a founding member of the United Nations Academic Impact Program and a number of other things. So we're very heavily involved. And what that means for you is you have the opportunity to go on visits. We actually you know, take buses in. Um, it's a free trip for you to go in and visit the UN to have a lecture, to attend a session. It's, it's really fascinating. And then we have ambassadors to the UN actually come to our campus and do lectures for you in classes or sometimes in special events. So you can participate in any of that. It's especially important for us in the School of Public and Global Affairs because in addition to the Master of Public Administration, we have a Master of Arts in Global Affairs. So I'll just tell you briefly about the Master of Arts in Global Affairs. Um, I think most of you are here to hear about the MPA today, but the Master of Arts in Global Affairs is actually a program that's for diplomats and it's taught by diplomats through these relationships that, that we have with the UN. Um, we have um, ambassadors, general consuls, and other experts in world affairs coming in to teach the classes. And we hold those classes in consulates in New York um, or missions to the United Nations. And the students um, come from embassies. They can also study from ministries in your home country, from NGOs or governments around the world and tie in either live or um, online, do online classes. Unfortunately, that particular Master of Arts in Global Affairs is not available to international students who travel on an F-1 visa because you have to be taking your classes on campus. But we do have a global affairs concentration within the MPA. So you, it's still accessible to you in a little different way, but you may have opportunity to interact with those diplomats at some time as well if you specialize in global affairs. So that, that Master of Arts in Global Affairs has two specializations in political and global economy and international problems and conflict resolutions. And then it's offered in a number of different formats. So you know, as I was saying in the consulates in New York, but also online or live connectivity. And then we have sort of a stage program where you can start with just a diplomato of two courses. I think a lot of you in Latin America um, are familiar with the diplomato. And then that you can roll into a certificate and then to a master's degree, which is 10 courses total. But now let's talk about, I think what you're here for today, which is the Master of Public Administration. Um, that also is part of our School of Public and Global Affairs, um, led by our director, Dr. Peter Woolley. It's so important for you as international students because what it's really all about is public service and being able to go home, take what you learned here in the United States in an MPA and take that home to be able to help your country at home and help improve things in your society. So what is a, an MPA? It's a Master of Public Administration. It's a professional degree that gives you the credentials to join management in the public and nonprofit sectors. So it's very similar to getting an MBA, a business degree, but for the public and nonprofit sectors. It's going to enable you to move up in an organization into management. Um, it's, it covers so many different areas because public and nonprofit, there's just millions of jobs in government and public services, healthcare, non-for-profit non management, education, anything that's public and nonprofit. So this is really like an umbrella that can cap your, your education or areas of specialization you might already have. You maybe you've majored in, in finance, but you want something that's going to get you into the public services. Then it will cover any number of areas that you can go into. Um, the MPA will give you practical skills to, for your leadership, to really move you up into leadership. The, the curriculum is designed to give you um, managerial skills, analytical skills, and, and conceptual skills that you need for those leadership positions. Right. And what does that mean for you? So first thing it does, it opens your world. It's going to expand the opportunities, the job opportunities and choices that you have. You, you get noticed, you become a leader and you become noticed from moving up in management and administration. You can do things like running for a government office, you can start new initiatives, but it's really your place to take over and start 
improving things, um, new systems and services. You go into public service where you can make a difference. Um, working in fields that are going to improve your community back home. Um, you can work in international NGOs. Um, for example, maybe you've, you have a degree in health services or you're working in a hospital, but you can actually, with this degree, then work for a non-governmental organization or nonprofit that delivers health services around the world. You can really go out and do some wonderful things in the world. Um, you can work in the, the police department, you can work in fire and safety, you can work in government. So there's many, many different areas. The, within the MPA, the Master of Public Administration, we then have, we have the business courses, but then we also have electives that you can specialize in certain areas. So if you take courses, four courses in one of these areas, that will be a specialization that shows up on your transcript. So you can specialize in public finance, public policy, public management, healthcare management, global affairs, and global transportation management. So here's one of our students. She's a current student, uh, Cassandra Alessio, and she's actually specializing in public policy within the MPA program. Uh, she graduated from Fairleigh Dickinson University in her undergrad, and then she came back for a master's degree. So I'm just going to play a quick video from her. Um, Hi everyone, she is. my name is Cassandra Alessio. I'm currently a student at Fairleigh Dickinson University studying for my master's in public administration. I actually attended Fairleigh Dickinson University as an undergraduate student and I received my BA in political science. Currently, I am working for a political fundraising firm and we work to raise funds for city, state, county, and federal elected officials. I wanted to obtain my MPA degree so I can get into the public policy realm. And I hope to see you soon at FDU. Terrific. So the MPA, you want to understand how the structure of it works. And most of your classes you're going to find are on either very late afternoon or weeknights and Saturdays. Um, that is so we can attract professionals into the program and that's great for you because then you get to be in class with people who are already working in the field and you can learn from them as well. Uh, we have lecture-based classes that means your traditional type of class where a professor is giving you a lecture. Um, we also, the newer format is a project-based format which is very interesting. It's much less structured um, where you would work as a team on a project. And then we have online classes as well. As international students, you do have to be full-time on campus in the Teenecker Florham campus. Full-time is three courses. So you have to take three courses in the fall term, three courses in the spring term, and then the summer is optional for you. You can stay on campus and not take classes or you can go home. Um, you may also take the internship and that uses what we call CPT, if you're familiar with that. That's the um, curricular practical training time that you're allowed under your F-1 visa. And you're also allowed to take one online course per term. If there's something particular that you want that's not on campus, you can do that once per term, one of your three classes. Or you can actually take the entire program online. If you're not able to travel to the United States, that is also an option for you. So the, the MPA um, project-based format is really very interesting. An example of how that worked, um, in, in New Jersey, there was a law passed that said that every community, every township had to provide affordable housing so that people who don't have a lot of money have an affordable place to live. And after some time had passed, they really needed to do an evaluation and see if that was being done. Were the townships fulfilling that obligation? The suspicion was that they hadn't quite achieved those goals yet. So our class actually sat together as a group. We had experts come in from the field to teach the class and they did that research. They went in and, and uh, researched what was being done in the townships. What did they achieve? What was still needed to be done? Um, what areas need to be improved? And they put together a report that then was used by professionals. There was a press release on it. So it's a real life project that you're pulling together as a team and it's, it's really much more of a, a career-oriented type of approach to, to learning, and practical learning. Um, the program does meet on Saturdays, Saturdays. So the MPA course requirements, this is what the program looks like. It's 39 to 42 credits. Um, each credit 
each course is three credits. So it's 13 to 14 courses. The 14th course um, can be waived. That's the internship. And some of you may be able to waive that, not have to actually do the internship. If you can show us that you've done an inter internship elsewhere or have some other type of experience that fulfills that requirement. Although actually most international students want to do the internship. It's a great experience and it's a terrific thing to put on your CV. It also can lead to um, job opportunities down the road with those organizations. So here's the basic structure. The core courses, you have 18 credits or six courses. This is like your required business courses that you take in the program. The things like budget and finance, human resources management, um, your public and nonprofit management, organizational theory and such. So those are all required courses that you have to take. And then you have another six courses or 18 credits of electives that you need to take. Now you can specialize in an area, you don't have to, you can just take general courses and do a little bit of everything, or you can specialize in one of these six areas, the public finance, policy, management, healthcare management, global affairs, or global transportation management. Those are 12 credits of the 18 credits. And then you can take another two courses in another area if you like. There's also a capstone project um, that is three credits and then where's the internship. If you'd like to see more about the individual courses that are in these different specializations, I can send those to you. It's a little too much detail for this presentation, but please write to me at my email at the bottom here, innocentfdu.edu, and I can send you those course lists. So the experiential learning, again, is the, the internships that are a required component of the MPA. It's actually a course. The way it's structured is you, you sign up for the course. It's called PADM 6810, MPA Internship. And our professor actually helps arrange internships for you. You can also find an internship on your own and then propose that to us. And we would have to approve that it fulfills certain criteria. And then you meet with the professor every couple of weeks in class and with the other students who are doing the internship. So you get to hear about what other students are doing in their jobs and in their internships, what kind of challenges they're facing. You can you know, share your challenges. And he also prepares you for going into the public and nonprofit job. You know, what do you need to know about public and nonprofit management before you go in there? Um, what kind of things do you need to know about working in the United States? And, so he helps prepare you with that as well. Um, Fairleigh Dickinson University has very strong connections throughout New Jersey, throughout the, the United States, really, with um, di diplomats, with uh, government, nonprofits. Um, all of our relationships with the United Nations are very strong. So that opens up a lot of opportunities. You can see on the right some of the sample internships our students have had. I'll show you, I have two more students who've done testimonials for us and I'm going to show you now. They're talking a little bit about their um, internship experience. So Sir Laxmi Rupala, um, her, her recording is a little bit faint. You may not be able to hear it. So um, on this next slide is what she's talked about. You can come back to it another time when you look at the recording if you'd like to read more. Uh, but I'm gonna play this and see if you can hear a little bit about what she was doing. This comes up okay. There we are. I'm an international student and I'm always interested to uh, learn about leadership skills, nonprofit organization, and also boost the management skills. And I feel MP program fits perfectly with my interests. And one of my dreams to work for a nonprofit organization and MP program helped me to reach out of my goal. Currently, I'm working as an intern in one of the prominent nonprofit organizations, Cancer Research Institute, headquarters in New York. And I work as a plan giving department research on the prospective donors by using results and analysis software. And I also uh, work with the different departments doing the various administrative tasks. One of, mm, one of the best thing is I got the opportunity to engage with the various departments. Recently, I started uh, interest in analytical 
portion. So I went to my supervisor and asked him like I want more of like analytical project and he agreed to it. The best part is of this internship is self-discovering yourself and self-discovering your interest and that is most important thing. And I highly recommend everyone to choose MBA program. It not only boosts your management skills and it has various options to choose like different specializations and also different op internship opportunities. So I highly recommend everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi. Close up. Okay, and we have one more um, student here. This is Elena Pajovic. She's also an international student, and her specialization is in global affairs. Now, Sri Lakshmi was specializing in healthcare management, and our other student before was in public policy. So. Um, they all have a little bit different interests that they can share with you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Elena. I'm an international student, and this is my second year in Fairleigh Dickinson University. I'm getting my master's degree in public administration. Uh, this year was amazing uh, because uh, um, according to my program, I was able to find uh, an internship in International Alliance of Women. And uh, this is very important for me because uh, my goal in life is to work in the uh, United Nations. And this is my first step towards my goal. And uh, thanks for Master's of Public Administration program which uh, helped me to get this perfect opportunity uh, to become an intern and to make this first very important step for me. So I wish you luck. And uh, this is beautiful university and amazing program. So have a nice day and bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, that was Elena. Okay, so you're probably wondering what you need to do to actually graduate. Uh-oh, <laughs> excuse me, and I will try to get this. Oh, somebody's taking a hike. All right. Excuse me one moment while I get this back on track. All right, sorry about that. Here we are again. So um, to complete the course again, you know you need 14 courses. The internship, if we waive it, what you need to do is send us your CV or resume, and I will evaluate that and see if it's if your previous experience will actually fulfill the requirement for that, and then you won't have to take it. But that's something you can do once you arrive. But it could cut that back to 13 required courses. You can also apply for something called advanced standing, and that means that we would look at maybe some other graduate courses that you've taken already, or some other um, certifications, and it's possible that they would fulfill some of the required courses that we have in the MPA. And we can waive up to nine credits doing that. So it's possible to actually get the program down to 10 courses um, if you have some previous experience. To stay in the program, to complete the program, you need to maintain a 3.0 grade point average or GPA. Um, you can get a C, it's okay, but you have to be very careful because it brings your GPA down. It's a, a master's degree is very short. It's only a couple of years. So you don't have a lot of time to get the GPA back up again. So you want to keep your grades high as much as you can. If you do get two C's, however, that is terms for dismissal, we would meet with you and talk to you about what the issues are and make that decision. Um, if you get a grade that's below a C, um, that does calculate into your grade point average, but it does not go towards passing credits. So if it's a required course, you will have to take the course again. 
uh, a certificate. So you don't have to wait until you get your degree to start showing some progress in it. Uh, we do have a certificate that you will receive in public management after 18 credits are fulfilled. It doesn't matter which credits in the MPA. Um, your first 18 credits or six courses, then you will have a certificate in public management that will appear on your transcript as well. So you can, if you go home for the summer and want to apply for a job, you can actually show that on your resume as some progress in your master's degree. And then you receive a, a paper um, certificate that will be distributed in your class. So now you want to know how do you apply? That's the most important thing, right? So it's the online application is a fairly simple process. It is online. You need to make sure to use the international student application for graduate studies. Just go to FDU and look that up and that will come up for you. There is a $50 application fee. You need to have all of your university transcripts sent and there's very clear instructions on the application how to do that. As an international student, your transcripts have to go through what we call a WES, WES evaluation. They will translate for them, translate them for you, and um, they, they do an evaluation so they can calculate a GPA that's equivalent to our educational system here, because our educational systems vary a little bit. Um, you do have to have a grade point average of 2.7 to apply, but if you don't have a 2.7, that's okay. You can still apply. We just want you to get two letters of recommendation and write a letter of motivation to us. But we still would like you to apply. Um, the TOEFL or IELTS scores, you have to provide your test scores as well as an international student. You need to have a TOEFL score of 79 or an IELTS score of 6.0. Um, there, the great news is there's no GRE or GMAT. You, there's no other test that you have to take except for the, the language test score. And you don't have to get a letter of recommendation or write an essay if you don't want to, it's optional. Um, but if you want to contact admissions with any admissions requirements or application requirements, you can contact global at fdu.edu. That is the international admissions department. So the deadlines are coming up um, for international F1 applications. They're due December 1st, and then it will take us about three to four weeks to process your application so you can then go get your visa. Um, it, it is a little bit early because you have that visa process you have to fulfill. The international orientation begins on January 16th, and then classes begin on January 21st. So I do ask when you've applied, please email me and just, just let me know that you've applied and remind me that you, you met me here on this webinar. Um, I'm not the person who's in charge of processing your application, but I work very closely with international admissions. So if there's any delays or any problems, you can always reach out to me and I'll communicate with them. But through the application process, really most of your Communication should be with global at fdu.edu, that's international admissions. If you have questions about the academic MPA program, certainly I'm, I'm here to answer questions for you. And again, if you need a little extra assistance, don't hesitate to, to reach out. Keep in communication, let me know how it's going, what type of progress you're making with your application. And again, you know, let me know that you've actually submitted your application. So here's the, the process as it flows. Um, you, you submit your application. Fairleigh Dickinson will give you a decision, hopefully an acceptance to the university. And then you'll get an enrollment packet. And in there is something called an enrollment confirmation. And that's basically something you need to send in saying, yes, I'm coming to Fairleigh Dickinson University in the spring. Then we can activate you and you can start processing your, your visa application. Admissions sends you your I-20, which is needed for your visa application. You need to go online and pay your visa fee, and then you make your visa appointment at the embassy at home. Um, just keep us informed of your progress. Um, once all that's done, then you'll activate your FDU email and register in your classes, which I will help you with those things, okay? And remember, get your application in by December 1st. So the, one of the questions, I know some of you sent in questions before um, the webinar today, and a lot of the questions really were, were about the price, because we know that it's very expensive here in the United States to go to university. And you had a lot of questions about scholarships. 
this, the fact that Fairleigh Dickinson was ranked in best value school is very important because you are getting your value. The, your education in the United States, getting a master's degree is a real investment in your future. And it does come back to you in the jobs that you receive and the advancement that you're going to receive. So here's, here's the, the answer to the big question is what is the cost? Um, the tuition and fees is about 12, 1285, you say $1,285 per credit. Again, it's a 39 to 42 credit program, um, about $50,000, depending how many credits you have to take. Um, but there are scholarships available, and there's a number of ways of looking into these. So we do have the FDU International Graduate Scholarship. That's an automatic scholarship. Your name is put in for it. It's You're evaluated based on your grade point average and your GMAT scores. If if you've submitted those, which you don't need to, but um, it's based on your academic performance or your GPA, and then it's renewed annually as long as you maintain that GPA. Um, they grant up to 8,000 per year, but every student gets a different amount. It's just based on, on how good of a student you are. Um, there's also the FDU scholarship, the Provost scholarship that you can apply for. You should look that up on the financial aid pages of FDU website. And there's also graduate assistantship opportunities. So many departments, most departments in the university hire graduate assistants to, to work up to 20 hours per week. And as an international student, you are allowed to do that. You're paid through tuition waiver. It's basically an exchange of your tuition for the work that you do. Um, sometimes you can be paid with money as well. But that goes against the, the international student CPT allowance that you're allowed to do. Um, you, if you want to look at opportunities, look up the career office at FDU webpage. Um, the School of Public and Global Affairs has a uh, family scholarship that's sponsored by the Orifice family. Um, they really believe in this program and they want to see our students um, have the opportunity they might not have otherwise. So you can contact us about that as well. That again is based on your ability to advance in the program. Um, ask your, if you're working, at home, ask your employer if they have any type of benefits for you to get your continuing education. You know, a lot of employers want you to advance and to get more education. So that's something that a lot of employers will do. Um, the United States government also has scholarships. If you contact the US Department of State or Fulbright or Education USA centers in your country, like every country there's an Education USA center. And that is um, really run by the US Department of State. Their job is to give you information on education in the United States. So they can tell you about Fulbright and then the number of scholarship opportunities that there might be. And then of course, you should ask at home. The, your government at home has many different um, scholarship opportunities that send students abroad for graduate studies. So contact your Ministry of Higher Education Ask about funding for graduate study. I mean, here, I'm sorry, I don't have something for every country represented here with us today, but um, if you're from Brazil, here's some of the places that you can look up and find information about scholarships for students. Brazil, Chile, Colombia, um, these government organizations have funds that will, will help you. Um, a lot of these scholarships, you have to get an admission first, not always, but um, some, a lot of them you have to apply to a university, get your admission, and then you go to the scholarship and ask for funding. So don't let this keep you from getting your application in. Go ahead and apply, get your, your decision from us, and then go to um, your scholarship. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, thank you everybody so much for, for joining us. I'm open now for any questions. Here is my information again if you want to reach me. But um, please, if you want to go into the Q&A, type in any questions you have, and then I will try to respond to those questions. Okay, so the first question I see is from Lucas, and it says, is this program offered part-time or full-time? So it is offered part-time for students who are in the United States, who are residents of the United States. But if you're an international student traveling on an F-1 visa, you have to take the course full-time. 
and you have to be on our on-campus locations. That's in, in Florham or Teaneck. Uh, full-time means you have to take a minimum of three courses. That's full-time. Um, Bianca. Uh, Bianca asks, what are the living costs in New York and how easy is it to find student accommodation? So our program, as a, as a student, you're going to actually be in New Jersey, okay? So um, you can live on campus. We have, we have housing on our campuses. And I think the cost is about 20, 25,000 a year. If you look at the, the international student pages, um, when you apply for your visa, you have to show a certain amount of income that's going to cover we, what we consider a standard of living um, and your health insurance and everything else. And so on the web page, when you apply, and that's what you're going to have to show in the next statement. So um, someone else has asked, what are the durations of the MPA? So the, the duration of the MPA, it generally takes students about two years to complete. If you take three courses per term, um, fall, spring, and it just depends if you take it in summer or not. You know, remember, you have 13 courses to take. Uh, another student has asked if we can put you in touch with companies in specific fields to help find a career after you've graduated. And the answer is yes, we have a career development office that you can contact for that. But also when you have your internship, um, that's a great chance to get in touch. They get to know you, you get to know them. And very often job offers come out of that. Um, another question, is there accommodation on campus? Yes, there's accommodation on campus. We have uh, dorm dormitories that you can live in. Um, the courses, again, that was, was in our, um, let's see if I can show the slide for you. I think I answered that question as well. So um, living in New Jersey, is there an opportunity to travel and explore New York? Absolutely, you can take the bus into New York anytime you want. You can travel anytime you want. We're, we're so conveniently located. We're, you know, an hour from the beach, not even. Actually, when you're, you're in Teaneck, you're very close to the beach. Um, we're an hour from the mountains. We're near Philadelphia. We're near New York City. Um, you can get on the Amtrak, which will take you all up and down the East Coast. The only thing you have to remember is when you're an international student, not to leave the country. Okay, you have to get your, your visa signed to leave the country. Okay, um, I think that is the presentation over. Do you have anything else to add, Christy, or? Okay, I think we might have lost Christy. <laughs> um, just wanted... Oh, are you still there? Yeah, it is, but I think my connection is going to bleep again. I'm so sorry. Okay, it's all right. We'll wrap it up. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Christy for her presentation. Um, and also thank you to all of you guys for attending and asking the questions. Um, please do visit viva-mundo.com uh, and subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, like our Facebook page, Salao do Estudente. Um, and hopefully see you soon for the next webinar. Thank you and good night. Bye. <laughs> Bye.